Now, our current teaching series is a brief one, reflecting on some of the most favourite and most meaningful psalms of people in our congregation. So last week, I shared about the mournful Psalm 88, which resonated with some of the darkest times of my life. And today, we're reflecting on Psalm 23, eminently the most popular of all psalms. It's the most searched for psalm on, Bible Gate, uh, on Google, and according to Bible Gateway, the six verses of this psalm are among the 14 most searched for verses in the entire Bible. So this passage is perhaps the most popular part of the whole Bible. It's commonly read at funerals. It's also um, on the wall, art, uh, of our church here, if anyone's noticed, in the back there. Um, I also know a, a poet who wrote 23 versions of Psalm 23. And he also wrote the cricketers' Psalm 23, which started, Bradman is my shepherd, I shall not want a 2020 career. Um, now, it's an enormously popular psalm, and the themes and imagery deeply resonate with many in our culture. So much so that a variety of musical artists have done songs using elements of Psalm 23, including musicians as diverse as U2, Marilyn Manson, Pink Floyd, the rapper Coolio, Bobby McFerrin, and, and even the thrash metal band Megadeth. A musical version of Psalm 23 was used as the theme music for the TV show The Vicar of Dibley. Psalm 23 is very much loved and very popular. But why? What is about this psalm that makes it so highly favoured? Maybe because it's short, it's simple, it's memorable. Or maybe because the psalm lends itself to cute pictures of sheep and green grass. Well, it's possibly a combination of all of these things. But I also think it's popular, it's a favourite for the same reason that we have favourite songs. For the psalm is simply and beautifully written and touches our deepest human longings. There is something about this psalm that resonates with our human experiences and expresses something profound, deep and beautiful about our desire for care, refreshment, protection, safety and hope. And the psalm expresses these deep longings through three profound images. Three memorable ideas which connect our human, with our human experience. The green pasture, the dark valley, and the house of blessing. So let's explore more as these images, of these images as we reflect on this most beautiful and popular part of Scripture and appreciate afresh as to why Psalm 23 is so enduring and popular. And the opening line summarises the psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Shepherds care and tend for their flock and hence psalm opens with a beautiful image of how the Lord guides and cares for his people. The Lord is a capable shepherd. But I also think that part of the beauty of this psalm is its personal nature. Notice that it doesn't start with simply an assertion of fact. The Lord is a good shepherd. The Lord is a powerful and strong shepherd. The Judeo-Christian deity is an outstanding infield ovine administrator. No, it's the Lord is my shepherd. It's intimate and personal. The Lord, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who is wise, mighty and powerful, is my shepherd. Though he's great, holy and inapproachable, he cares for me. And hence, with the Lord, I lack nothing. Nothing. Now, this could be interpreted because I'm sure that there are things that I lack. My kids tell me that I lack a Ferrari. I lack a swimming pool. I lack a ski lodge. Where we could all list many things that we lack. But the point of the psalm is that when you have the Lord as your shepherd, what more do you need? For our deepest longings and desires are satisfied in the Lord. My shepherd, he gives me what I need. 
Kari Ten Boom was part of a family who hid Jews from the Nazis during the Second World War. But she was discovered, captured and then sent to a concentration camp. Yet even amidst her suffering and imprisonment, she could attest to lacking nothing. Indeed, she famously said, you can never learn that Christ is all you need until Christ is all you have. Remarkably, even in a German concentration camp, she could testify of the Lord as her shepherd, lacking nothing. The Lord is our shepherd, is all we need. And so, this truth, uh, and so this truth of all the satisfying shepherd provides context for the first major image of the psalm, and that is of green pasture in verses 1 to 3. The intimate and personal nature of how the Lord relates with the psalmist is described through four verbs. Look at the verbs there which are used to describe what the Lord does to me and where he takes me. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths. Again, the description is intimate and personal. And these four images combine to create a beautiful concept of refreshment, blessing and care. The Lord, my shepherd, guides and cares for me and blesses me with rich pasture. There seems like a a small element of coercion with the expression, he makes me lie down in green pastures. It feels a little like enforced rest. You're going to lie down here and you're going to enjoy it. Maybe like enforcing bedtime for children, you know. This is enforced rest in good pasture, but it's for our good to rest, to be fed and to be blessed. And the theme of refreshment and care continues with the expression, leading beside quiet waters. It's interesting how this psalm associates refreshment with going to nature, green pasture and quiet waters. Hence, in a crazy busy world where it's so easy to be pulled in different directions, we can feel frazzled or or burned out. But the gentle words of this good shepherd who leads me beside quiet waters and refreshes my soul expresses wonderful care and concern for in the Lord we are refreshed and he guides me along the right paths. Now I I made a big mistake when I was planning to propose marriage to Di about 20 years ago. We were living in in Sydney at the time and I had the idea of proposing to her at this place. Oh sorry not that place, (laughs) sorry that was I missed, I missed one. This place, that was, that's where we were going to go. This place, um, Bradley's Head, which is in Sydney and has panoramic and stunning and romantic views of Sydney Harbour. The problem was that at, when, at the time in the evening, uh, it was dark and the road to Bradley's Head is locked at night, meaning that we had to walk down a dark, lonely path in the bush for about 15 minutes to get to this point. So by the time we arrived, I was not feeling particularly safe or happy to, to uh, have a, accept a, a proposal for marriage, I'm sure. So as I was guiding her down this path, I had this in mind about what it was going to be like. <laughs> Whereas for Di, all she could see was a dark valley. <laughs> At that particular point, I wasn't being a particularly good shepherd. I was leading along the wrong paths and Di certainly didn't feel safe. Or blessed. But thankfully, the Lord is much wiser, for He guides along the right paths. He leads His people to blessing and refreshment. But these are paths, not just a path to the best pasture and quiet pools. For notice that these paths don't lead to a self indulgent pamper session. Whilst there's refreshment and blessing, these paths don't lead the sheep just to get lazy and fat. No, because undergirding this psalm is the desire for the shepherd to gently and tenderly lead his sheep to honour the name of the Lord and to bring him glory. The guidance and refreshment offered by the shepherd is ultimately for his name's sake, for the name of the Lord. Hence these paths are paths of righteousness, paths of wisdom, Paths which are not selfish pampering, but the straight path of upright moral conduct. 
paths which when followed will mean that the sheep will glorify the name of the Lord who guides them. So this first image of pasture shows that the Lord guides and cares for me to his glory. And then in verse 4, we come to the second and perhaps most evocative image of this psalm. After the pasture and the quiet pools, we come to the dark valley. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This is the most searched for verse in Psalm 23 and the fourth most searched for verse in the whole Bible. And perhaps a reason for its popularity is that it acknowledges that life is not always green pasture, quiet pools and restful bliss. Life brings valleys and difficulties. I'm sure we can all resonate with dark valleys in our lives. And traditionally, the valley is the valley of the shadow of death. And it seems that the older I get, some of the valleys get darker and I now attend more funerals than I do weddings. The image of the dark valley captures a, human, a universal human experience of suffering and difficulty. Indeed, this is the very first line of the enormously popular song by Coolio, Gangster's Paradise, which was the most popular song of 1995. Now, it has to be one of the most popular songs, I think, in the world because even though it was released 28 years ago, the YouTube video has still racked up over 1.2 billion views. And the iconic first line of this masterpiece song is, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Quote directly from Psalm 23 verse 4. Coolio's song, Gangster's Paradise, explores this valley in the darkness of human experience and the darkness of the life of a gangster. It's a song which captures the challenges and pessimisms of life on the streets of the US. The words from Psalm 23 fit the theme perfectly and show that the biblical imagery and ideas are still chart-topping thousands of years after it was originally penned. For the experience of walking through the darkest valley, the shadow of death, is our shared human experience. But the problem with the dark valley that Coolio encounters and explores in Gangster's Paradise is that ultimately there is no safety. No security, no rest, no hope, only vigilance, danger. A cycle of being trapped in a violent, evil, uncertain system. The gangster lives forever in the shadow, in the valley of the shadow of death. And perhaps one of the reasons this song is so enduringly popular is because this maybe reflects our culture, our world, where there is no true and lasting hope and our lives are characterised by dark valleys. But the good news offered in Psalm 23 is that though the psalmist walks through the darkest valley, though he's close to suffering, opposition and death, the psalmist fears no evil. Why? Why does he fear no evil? Is it because he's tough, he's strong, he's self-sufficient, he believes in himself, he dares to dream? Well, no, look in verse 4. You, the Lord, my shepherd, my guide, my strength... Are with me. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. The Lord's reality and presence brings peace, safety, security amongst the worst suffering. In the presence of the shadow of death, there is no fear, no reprisal, no condemnation, because you are with me. And verse 4 goes on to say that your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now the rod and the staff are two different things. The rod was used to fight off invaders, any dangerous creatures who threatened the flock. And the staff was used for the discipline and correction of the sheep within the flock and keep them from wandering off. Alexander Duff was a missionary to India and on one particular trip along a very narrow path, cut out from the face of the dangerously high rock, he was fascinated in watching a shepherd. The shepherd carried in his hand a long rod, a crook fashioned at one end, and the other consisting of a heavy band. If a sheep wandered too near to the precipice, the shepherd would gently catch its hind leg with the crook and draw it back to a place of safety. 
If a dangerous beast attacked the flock, the heavy weighty end was used as an instrument of defence. Both the rod and the staff provided comfort. The good shepherd keeps his sheep safe by guiding them for their good. The shepherd doesn't just let his sheep do whatever they want. There is discipline and guidance to ensure that they walk along the right paths. Now, I'm not just saying this because my children are here today, but the staff, the method of discipline, is for the good of the sheep. It's actually unloving to let, to, to let people in your responsibility to do whatever they like. Otherwise, it could end up in the world of, say, Lord of the Flies, where only power and might wins. There needs to be moral restraint. And hence, this is one of the reasons that God presents us with a, a vision of righteous paths, a pathway to true life. And this is why certain attitudes and actions are considered sinful and wrong and other things righteous and part of the good life. And so here again, this psalm brings great comfort and peace. Amidst the darkest valleys of our lives, be it bereavement, sadness, pain, loneliness or the threat of evil, the shepherd is with his people. He is with his people, with his rod and staff to protect and guide them. Kari Ten Boom was well associated, acquainted with suffering and evil and very, very dark valleys. Yet she rested in the comfort of the Lord when she said, when a train goes through a tunnel and it gets dark, you don't throw away the ticket and jump off. You sit still and trust the engineer. This psalm brings comfort knowing that I am safe amidst the worst suffering because the Lord, my shepherd, is with me. And then we come to the final image. After the green pastures and the dark valley, we come to the house of blessing. And notice that we've moved from images of the natural world, pastures and waters and valleys, to more domestic images, a table, a cup and the house of the Lord. For as we approach this house we are comforted this time in hope. For I don't think that this is house is the one in which the psalmist presently lives in, but he anticipates being there in the future. The present may be characterised by dark valleys and challenges and difficulties, but the f- future is one of certain blessing and abundance. It's a place where a table is being prepared. A table, no doubt, with food and feasting. My head is to be anointed and my cup will overflow. These are images of blessing and abundance. And what is the source of this blessing? Is it because I've earned it, because I've done all the right things, hence I deserve it? Not really, because this blessing is built on verse 6. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. The care, protection, blessing and security we receive is because of the goodness and love of God. No matter where he goes, no matter which dark valley he might be in, no matter which enemy he might have to face, the psalmist feels a deep sense of enduring goodness, of the the enduring of goodness and love of God following him. Not following him like an annoying smell or a stray animal or a creepy stalker, but wherever we go, the goodness and love of God follow us all the days of my life. The psalmist didn't experience blessing all the time for he's walking through dark valleys and he has enemies but he knows that his love and goodness of the Lord provides security and comfort and hope. And we see the hope in this final part of verse 6 and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The psalmist anticipates a future of guaranteed blessing. Whilst the pastures and quiet waters he presently experiences are pleasant They aren't his final destination. The final destination is the house of the Lord, a house without valleys or enemies or difficulties or worries. Indeed, this house feels a little like the sanctuary of Rivendell in J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. A place of peace, blessing and contentment and ultimately rest. In fact, there's actually a school in Sydney called Rivendell, which is a mental health facility specialising in the problems of young people. The name 
Rivendell was chosen because in the Hobbit, the Rivendell is a place to rest and recuperate. In the words on its website, a sanctuary for those on difficult journeys. Yet in Psalm 23, the house of the Lord is not merely a sanctuary, it's the final destination. It's an eternal house, dwelling in a house of blessing and safety forever. And this is wonderful, good news, news of hope and blessing. Maybe this is why this psalm is so popular, for it acknowledges the challenges of life, but it knows that at the end there is good news. For those who follow the shepherd can rest and dwell in blessing and peace in his house forever. But whilst this psalm brings good news, there are still some who reject it. People who don't like the idea of being described as sheep. They say it's insulting to be called a stupid sheep who can't think for themselves and are told where they have to graze and where they have to drink. So some look at this psalm and think, the Lord is my shepherd, and think, I don't need anyone to guide me or lead me or look after me. I can manage my life as I like. I'm fine. Thanks very much. Well, maybe many might like this or might think like this, but the reality is that deep down, humans are frail, finite, imperfect and limited. We actually can't live as fully independent, self-made, self-actualised people. We just can't create our own perfect self-identity or life, for there are dark valleys, dark shadows and things outside of our control. So maybe this is why so many in our world live life so unmoored, struggling to find meaning and purpose in it all, struggling to find identity and validation. They claim, I am my own person, not a sheep, but then, who am I? I can love myself, I can buy myself flowers, but when the flowers fade, how do I know that anyone really loves me? The comfort of this psalm is that we belong to the shepherd, He is my shepherd, which means that he can also say that you are my child. Which means regardless of what I do, when we belong to the shepherd, I do have value. I'm loved. I'm cared for. This defines us and we don't have to frantically try to create our own identity to be someone. For we are someone. We belong to the shepherd. We can rest. Rest knowing that this blessing is given to us through the love of God. And the goodness of God. The idea that I don't need a master, a guide, a shepherd also means that you, you miss out. <laughs> you miss out on the blessing and hope offered here due to the goodness of God. This beautiful psalm is written to describe the wonderful care and protection of the Lord, even through difficult times. But I don't think it's merely coincidence that Jesus, in the Gospel of John, claims to be a good shepherd. For the character of the Lord described in this psalm is consistent with the character of Jesus. One who offers rest for those who are weary and heavy laden. One who loves and cares for the weak and defenceless. The little children. One who is so concerned for his people that he longs to gather his children as a hen, her chicks under her wings. But the way that Jesus most clearly demonstrates his love and his concern for his people is described in John 10. Where I am the good shepherd... I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd, my shepherd, a shepherd who uses his rod and his staff to guide and correct along paths of righteousness, the one who knows me and and and, and whom I know. There is a deep, profound relationship between the shepherd and his sheep who most significantly lays his life down for his sheep. He knows us. He loves us. We're not just nameless followers like on social media. We are known to him. Even despite my weaknesses and my shortcomings, he lays down his life for us. On Wednesday, our Bible study, in our Bible study group, we had a discussion about the concept as we asked this question, how do I know that God loves me? In answering this, we could look to different blessings of our lives, material things, relational things, providential things. And I'm sure many of us could talk, I mean John for 92 years I'm sure could talk about the many ways that God has been faithful over the years. 
But even though our experiences may vary, my feelings may fade, I may walk through many difficult times, the one rock-solid certain way that we know that God loves me is because Jesus died for his sheep. He is the good shepherd who willingly lays down his life to save his sheep, to save them from their sins, to give them hope and a future and a blessing far beyond anything they could imagine. This is how I know for certain that God loves me. Jesus is the good shepherd. The fulfilment of this psalm, the good shepherd who cares for his people, who walks with them, the one who dies for them, and who will ultimately bring hope of eternal life with him. Now, as I said before, this series is reflecting on some of the favourite and most meaningful psalms of people in our congregation. And today, we're going to hear from Louisa Lynch about what this psalm means to her. So I'd like to invite Louisa now to come and to share for a couple of minutes about what this psalm means to her. So Louisa, you can come. Yeah, so thanks very much, Louisa. Every time when I read this Psalm 23, it always gives me a warmth and comforting feelings. It reminds me so much of God's protection, his tender loving care, and a deep sense of peace and calm that the words bring to me. I remember one time when I went to hospital for a major eye surgery. Colin took me there, checked me in, and waited at the reception area until a nurse called me in into another waiting room for preparation before the surgery. Colin was not allowed in and he had to leave and I was left alone. I started to shiver as soon as the nurse called me. I got more and more nervous (laughs) as I sat in a waiting room wondering what would happen. So I tried to think of nice things, pray and meditate to ease my nerves. Somehow this psalm came to my mind and there are also an image of of a heavenly father holding my hand, walking me up to the operation theatre, appearing on my mind. At that moment I felt I was very close to God. I wasn't alone anymore, realizing that God was going through was going through it all with me. He totally understands my fear and he comforted me very much. I was thankful to God for peace for his peace, his care which he provided during that period of time. And now when I have to face challenging times, I am assured that God is there, holding my hands, following me wherever I go. God is good and is worthy of my trust in him. Just as in verse 6 it says, Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you so much, Louisa. Though I walk through the valley of the, the, the dark valley, you are with me. Psalm 23 is rightly the most popular psalm. It's beautiful. It walks us through the challenges and the ups and downs of life. And it shows the constant presence of care of our shepherd with us, knowing that even though we go through dark valleys, we need not fear. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this psalm, for the reminder of the care, safety and security that comes, that even though we walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Thank you for Louisa, thank you for her faith in you, and thank you for the comfort that your presence brings, and that the knowledge that she is loved, and we are all loved, because you are our shepherd. And thank you that you are our shepherd and you know us and you love us and may we trust you and live for you always. Amen. John 10, 14 to 15, Jesus says, 
I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Let's pray. Father, may we go from here comforted and at peace, knowing that you are with us amidst the challenges of life. May we live for you in all things. Amen. It's going to be fantastic. Anyway, well, I hope you have a great week and look forward to seeing you back here again next week as we continue our little mini-series on um, some of our favourite psalms. And we look forward to maybe hearing from Flora next week as she's going to share as well. So look forward to seeing you. Have a great week and look forward to seeing you next week.